Welcome to part 2 of our 2017 Bonaire video. When we checked out Oil Slick the day before, we realized it was extremely sheltered from the surge that was impacting the southern part of the island, so we came back to give it a go. The uneven rock surface and steep ladder make it a little intimidating, but if you take it slow like we did, it isn't too bad. I will say looking down that ladder with all your gear on, fins and a camera rig in your hands, does make the jump off the cliff entry option seem more appealing, but we played it safe. You're welcome, Mom. In the wake of dawn, I see you shine. When I feel that heartbeat, heartbeat, I fly so much higher. Fly so much higher. I don't know that guy, or any of these scuba divers other than Alex you see in my videos. One of the cool things about Bonaire, though, is that most everyone there dives. Like going out for a walk on a sunny day, you'll often pass other people while swimming along the reef. Everyone is helpful and super friendly, too. I used to be afraid of eels. They looked so mean with their big teeth and pointy mouths. Now that we've seen so many, I actually like watching them. At least small ones like this sharp-tailed eel who didn't care about anything except what he could rummage out of those holes in the ground. Have you ever heard of a trumpet fish? I never had before we started snorkeling and diving. This is what it looks like. 
They're actually very common in Bonaire and other tropical places we've gone diving. They range in color from yellow to bright blue and sometimes look like they're doing a headstand above the reef before diving in to catch their prey. On our annual trip to Bonaire three years ago, we met a Canadian couple who was staying at the same condo complex as us. This year, when we sat down at the dive shop orientation, they were there again for the same week we were. When we tried out this new restaurant, they were there too. I guess great minds think alike. Hopefully we'll run into them again someday. This appetizer was really interesting. Served on a board in the shape of Bonaire, it used edible seaweed and algae to represent different geographic features on the island. The rolls were the most delicious. They got their dark color from octopus ink. This was our last full day on the island and our last chance to dive. We woke up to some of the worst weather yet with a huge rainstorm. Knowing it might be another full year until we got to dive again, we went out anyway. It's not like diving in the rain makes you any wetter. Soft corals like these help us judge the strength and direction of the current so that we swim against it on the way out and with it on the way back. You can see it was pretty strong this day. Want to see a neat trick? The sparjack is almost black while hunting on the bottom of the ocean. Watch it change back to its normal silver with a blue stripe as it leaves the area. This is a basket star. During the day it stays crumpled in a ball. At night it unfurls its lacy branches to catch things drifting by. They can live for up to 35 years.
Just like that, another week in Bonaire had flown by and it was time for our final dive of the trip. At least it was a great one. The sun started to come back out, which improved visibility just in time for an awesome sight. I've been wanting to swim in a bait ball since I got certified, and I finally got my wish, no more than 20 feet off the dock at Belmont. You might be wondering what exactly a bait ball is. Remember that color changing bar jack? Here are some of its big brothers in action. They're on the hunt and the school of fish is clumping together in a defensive maneuver. They shift and change the shape of the school to evade the stalking predators. I could have stayed here and watched for the entire dive. It was mesmerizing and a little dizzying as they swam all around me. Since you can't fly for 24 hours after diving due to the residual dissolved nitrogen in your bloodstream, we decided to make the most of our time above the surface. My husband chartered a sailboat from Bonaire by the sea for our final afternoon and evening. We would highly recommend spending time with Rich and Sue aboard their boat if you're ever on Bonaire. It was the perfect way to end our trip. In addition to owning and chartering their boat Amore, Rich is a dive master and Sue is a marine biologist who works on turtle conservation in Bonaire. So when she offered to guide us on an afternoon snorkel off the coast of Klein Bonaire, we dove right in. Little did we know that it would be a highlight of the trip as thousands of non-stinging jellyfish streamed around us while we swam. It was right about now I found out some cool things about jellyfish. 
One, they have these cool little fluttery things inside of them. Two, they feel really weird when they go down your bathing suit. After our snorkel, we relaxed and enjoyed the sunset and a fantastic meal of seared tuna and sushi prepared by Sue before sailing back toward the lights of the harbor. I wish I could have caught the blue bioluminescence in the wake of the sailboat on camera. I guess that'll have to be a goal for next time. Until then, Bonaire.